Juice Wall Productions. How's it going guys? This is Josh from Juice Wall Productions. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Revenger kit from Vaporoso. So before I talk any more about it, let's just go down and look at the good stuff. Alrighty guys, now we're down on the bottom looking at this Revenger kit here, all over this guy. So it has really nice packaging, comes in this little box here, um, does tell you how big your tank is with this little sticker here. They could have just put it somewhere else over here on the box, however. But if we look at this side over here, it has the Omni Board 2.0, and it has RCT, remaining charge time, that's what that stands for. It has a 2 amp quick charge system, and a USB input protection. It's made with a revolutionary IML case with durable durability, and it is also environmental friendly, which can be a pro for some people. And then it does have gives you a little rundown on a few things about the tank but we'll get into that in a minute so it in this guy it contains a revenger mod the nrg tank uh, one gt4 core coil and one gt8 core coil and you also get an extra pyrex glass tube and a usb charger cable with this guy so let's pop it open and take a look here pull that guy open this guy flips out this little box here so in here you are going to get your revenger mod and your energy tank and your spare glass for it and then right here is just for that spare coil that it comes with but i am currently running that inside my tank right now so we'll get into that and then in here in this little box you're going to receive a really really nice charging cable from vaporoso it is a mean looking cable. This cable overall is really nice. It has says little quick charge on there. It's all made out of metal. It's got this nice kind of mesh scaly kind of thing to it. Really nice cord, pretty durable. And then in the rest of this box, you're going to have your it had, came with two two not just one user manuals now these are very lengthy and long they could have done a better job with making these a little bit more user friendly um, comes in a bunch of different languages on these guys though so good plus especially if you do not speak English and then in this little black case it comes with your Vaporoso warranty card comes with this little guy here talks a little bit about some of their coils from them gives a little bit about the NRG tank right there and then here you just have your little warning card for anything that you probably shouldn't be doing with this. So get that out of the way. And then right here, be amazed. We already covered everything in here, so let's go ahead and pull this guy out and take a look. And then also one thing to notice that they didn't say about this guy. When you pop this guy open, it also does come with a 510 drip tip adapter if you want to use some of your own 510 drip tips if you already have those collected and a bunch of extra o-rings and whatnot so you can definitely swap those out if those start to go bad on you and then let's go jump right into this modern tank Alrighty, so let's take a look at this mod real quick first. First things to notice, it is very sleek, slim design, feels really comfortable in my hand, similar to the Alien. find that it's just a little bit more comfortable than the Alien from Smoke Tech. And then let's pop some batteries in there. So battery door is just going to come off just like that. It is magnetic. Pop it in, pop it off just with your fingernail, you can grab it anywhere. And then here we'll have our batteries here you have negative on the left side pop it in just like there and one there a couple of things to notice it has really good battery venting right there on the bottom as well as in the top right here pops right back on there already turned on for us and everything a couple things to see you have both your battery indicators variable wattage mode on the right there you have it and I have it currently set in high mode. That's a clock setting, we'll get to that in a moment. 
then here you have your ohms and your voltage, what wattage you're at, that little S right there is also because I do have it in smart mode right now, and then you have a pull counter, which is really nice. So let's throw the NRG tank that it comes with on top. Oh, by the way, this is a nice springy adjustable 510 pin right there. Alrighty, now that we got that tank on there, and let's go through this menu system a little bit. So this guy in that smart mode auto adjusted to 55 watts. Um, so let's go into the menu, and to do that, you're going to press the fire button and the minus button at the same time. You go in here, focus a little bit. So you have your variable wattage mode, your variable temperature mode, time set for your clock. And that is your factory reset button there on number four. If you messed with any of the settings and you don't really like what's happening, you can always default it back to normal. And then there's your smart mode on and off. So let's go into that guy. All you got to do is hold that middle button there. And we want to swatch, swip it over to the smart mode or off on the smart mode. And then your screen time and exit. So let's go into your variable wattage mode. Go ahead and hold that middle button down. So here in variable wattage mode, you can change it from normal, hard, or soft. I usually keep it in hard. I like a little bit faster of a ramp up. Then going into the temperature mode, you can set your wattage from there. And then it has a bunch of other adjustments from the home screen. Coming into the time set, you can hold down that middle button and you can set the date and you can also set the time. And it is in military time, so you will have to account for that. And then you have your whoops, normal pointer clock or off, and you also have your number clock, which will show you the date on there as well. I just like the clock look. Looks very clean and nice when my mod's just sitting on the counter. And then let's exit here. So once we're in this guy, if you press and hold this metal button and let go, switch to temperature mode in Fahrenheit, there you show stainless steel at 75 watts. And then you can switch it to nickel titanium and then you have two memory modes memory mode one for your TCR and memory mode two and then it also has a bypass mode so you can run this guy similar to a dual 18650 mech mod which is really nice however it will limit you to just 4.0 volts instead of being a full 4.2 which is kind of a nice safe feature keep everybody from hurting themselves and then we'll go back to the main screen um, overall these buttons are nice and clicky you can go up and down with them also, these are a 5 watts to 220 watts, and they read down to a 0 0.05, and will read up to a 5.0, which is really nice. So you can kind of build wherever you want if you were running an RDA on here or a rebuildable section. Um, however, I'm not getting any rattle out of this guy whatsoever, just a little bit. Sounds like the button here is just moving just a little bit, but not enough to bother me whatsoever so that's about it for this mod oh it does have one other feature though if we actually one two three on that metal button in your wattage mode your variable wattage you have your normal mode and you also have a curve mode setting which is really cool so you can really adjust how you want to vape with this little graph right here and turn it up on watts on each one of these settings for however long you want to pull it on for which is really nice another cool feature similar to some of the osmotis curve modes um, but it does work and it works very well so looking at the wattage here, it does go up pretty darn fast, but coming back down into the sync or the dual digits, um, with you can go by just points, or you can hold it down and it will slowly start to work its way down a lot faster. Um, it's a little slower than I like, but it's also kind of perfect just because when things go a little bit too fast, you miss numbers and whatnot. Um, but like, let's just say, for instance, let's show you a little bit about that smart mode here. So like here we're reading at 94 watts and we're not in smart mode. So how to turn that on, go here, positive and negative at the same time. Go in here, move our way down to the smart mode. And we want to click that and hold it down. Yes, we're in smart mode. Come down, exit out of here. And then we have that little S and then what this does is it's going to auto adjust based on what kind of ohms your coil are reading at and try and help you get the best vape. So now that that's off, screw it back down and it will auto adjust to that. Screw this guy on. 
new coil, yes, and then it jumped down to 55 watts, and that's where this mod believes I will get the best vape out of this coil, which is pretty cool. Um, I really like that feature. I've started to use it a lot off of this guy. Um, some things to note about the actual box mod itself, if you see here, I do have a couple nicks and chips. This box is very durable though. I've dropped it straight on its face right on the asphalt and it's very durable. I, I would not be worried about dropping this guy or anything like that. Now the paint will scratch over time just from use and whatnot. But it is a pretty nice paint job all over and then you have this IML uh, back plates and front plates here for the screen which is a very nice material it is a little bit fingerprinty though like I was saying when we first jumped down here and then let's go and break down this tank a little bit so overall these guys are very nice one thing to note is it does come with this strip tip with the spit back guard um, some people really don't like it I however on this mod I don't find it to be um, that big of an issue it does protect my mouth from the spit back which is a plus um, however it does cut down on the airflow just ever so slightly and then it is a similar fill to the smoke tanks but a little bit better designed, I think, in my personal opinion. It's just a normal slide instead of the actual flip. All you gotta do is just kinda get your finger on it, twist it a little bit, and you're good. And you fill it up straight through that little port there. Now in here, this is one of their pre-built coils that it does come with. It is the stainless steel one. This one is their .15 dual coil, uh, usually recommended for a max of only 70 watts. Um, but overall I really like it. I do get a pretty tight draw out of this with that coil in there and with their quad coil um, even with the airflow all the way open. So continuing with this airflow here, um, it is adjustable. It does have a lock in there so you're not going to pass it or overpass which I do like about it. But it is kind of a con for me that it is so restrictive with having such large airflow holes. Um, with it only having that much, even when I cut it down to here, it like even cutting it here is almost a mouth to lung hit. Um, now you can do a just full on lung hit with that, but it's going to be a pretty tight draw and it's going to just get tighter and tighter and tighter the more you go. Um, I would like to see this tank with just a touch more airflow, um, but one big pro for me is it is compatible with all of your baby beast coils so they have a bunch of different coils from them and whatnot so you can throw those guys in here as well which is pretty nice I do really like the way this tank looks they do have some nice edging here give you some really good grip when you're taking this guy apart overall I think this tank was made well all their threads seem pretty darn smooth alrighty so wrapping this tank up a little bit there's one more thing to note that this bottom piece right here is Delrin, so it does a really good job of preventing heat transfer from your tank to your mod, or the other way around from your mod to your tank, which I really do like that, and I do think that work does work very well for my time using this. So let's put things together, and go back up top and have some final thoughts about this guy. Alrighty guys, so back up top now. So let's go through a little bit of pros and cons about this device. A few things I really like, I really am loving the Omni chip from it. It's so far so good. It has been a total kick ass uh, chip. Hits really hard, really decent. I like the smart mode in it that switches it to whatever the recommended wattage is from the device based off of your ohms of your coil. Um, I really am enjoying the tank itself. I love the flip style fill and um, I like that it holds five mils. It just is a nice big tank. Lasts me, you know, a few hours on one tank, which is a big pro for me. I like that it's a 220 watt box mod and that it reads all the way down to a 0.5, which is a big pro for me since I like to run rebuildables. And that is also, I'm really enjoying how comfortable it is in the hand and that it is made with their IMR or IM l case and so far it's been really durable i do have a little bit of scratching but i also dropped it 
face first onto the asphalt and there's minimal damage and everything still works great on it. So that's big pros, very durable. I'm really digging it. I like how they put plenty of battery venting on the bottom as well as right above your batteries. Those are some big pros for me. Now, however, a couple of cons for me is that they don't mark their coils and so far all their coils have been stainless steel coils and they do not say that. Um, so anybody who's just going to go throw in any kind of coil might not know that. Just kind of good to know what kind of metals they use inside their coils. And then this mod does seem to take fingerprints pretty well, so that can be a con to some of you, but it's not a big bother in my eyes. Um, other than that, so far this has been a kick-ass mod. Um, there's not much else that I can think of that I don't really like about this. Overall, it's a perfect setup for me. So this is Juice Wall Productions. Change tastes good. Have a good day, guys. Join the revolution. How's it going, guys?